Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, a paring knife. Deja vu? What? You already watched the paring knife video, right? Well, don't worry, we got something different today. Uh, I'll actually be doing several different videos featuring uh, paring knives. Paring knives can be fun because they don't take tons of metal and they're a little more forgiving in terms of grinding technique than larger knives like chef's knives, which are actually pretty complicated or pretty demanding to grind. Um, now, in our first video, we made a Damascus steel blade. That's kind of a complicated high-end type thing. What we're going to do today is going to be a little bit simpler, something that uh, maybe would be more appropriate for a beginning knife maker. So let's launch right into it. So in our first video, we made a Damascus steel blade. In this one, we'll take on a slightly simpler challenge, a blade made from 01 tool steel. Again, we'll be using stock removal methods, meaning that we're going to grind the steel down using a belt grinder. All right, let's launch right into it. I'll be using a piece of precision ground 01 steel, 3 seconds of an inch thick and about 8 inches long. Precision ground steel, as the name suggests, has been dimensioned at the mill to very precise thickness. This costs extra money, but it makes our job easier. 01 steel is a high carbon tool steel composed of about 1% carbon and a fair amount of manganese. Its high manganese content makes it a deep hardening steel, which makes it a little more forgiving in terms of heat treating technique. 01 steel is often considered to be sort of a beginner steel and I think some people dismiss it as a result of that, but that doesn't mean it's not a good steel. It's really terrific steel. First, I'll drill three one-quarter inch holes in the tang. These are to accommodate the pins used to secure the handle scales to the knife. I'll use a little drilling jig that I've made which has holes of common sizes laid out at common handle pin distances. In my previous paring knife video, I showed one method of drilling tang and handle scale holes. Now, it can be very tricky to get all the holes lined up correctly, and having a jig like this makes things a little easier. I made this one so that I could drill a variety of different hole sizes all from the same jig. You'll notice that this allows me to drill the scales and the tang itself all in one throw. By doing this and using the jig, which assures that the holes go through nice and perpendicular, I don't have to worry that the holes will not line up correctly when I insert the pins. First, I'll trace out the general design and then grind it to shape on my belt grinder. I'm not going for the exact shape as I draw it. I'm going to refine that on the belt grinder and work it down to something that looks good to my eye. Notice how I use the platen wheels to obtain some of the radiuses in the profile. I'll go ahead and grind the bevels into the blade. I won't say too much about the technique of grinding bevels because I've gone into that in a number of other videos. If you're interested in going deeper on that subject though, I've got a whole video on bevel grinding. Anyway, once I've got the bevels almost where I want them, I'll jump up to a high grit belt and refine the lines.
Now it's time for heat treatment. As I said, O1 is pretty forgiving in terms of heat treatment, so it's ideal for heat treating using fairly rough and ready methods. You can heat it cherry red with an acetylene torch or forge and quench it in oil with pretty good results. But as it happens, I've got a heat treating oven with good temperature controls. So factory heating instructions say heat to 1200 degrees, soak there for several minutes, then raise the temperature to between 1450 and 1500. So that's what I'll do, heading for about 1475 Fahrenheit. When the blade reaches temp, I'll quench it in oil. Yippee, fire. I mean, that's really why we do this stuff anyway, right? Sharp, pointy things and fire. Okay, I'll go ahead and clean off the oxides with some sandpaper, then degrease the blade thoroughly in preparation for handle assembly. Now I'll mix up some epoxy. I'm using quarter inch mosaic pins to secure the handle. Because this is a very oily wood, I'll use lacquer thinner on the inner surface of the wood, the part that touches the tang, to decrease the oils present. Now there's no way to 100% degrease an oily wood like this, but you can certainly minimize potential problems this way and get most of the oil at least off of the surface. Notice how much color comes away in the towel. That's oil. This should help the epoxy bond more efficiently to the wood. Now just a note about epoxy. If you're going to use consumer type epoxies, which are not the most high strength epoxies on the market, you want to give them every opportunity to bond well. Surface prep is really important with epoxy. You don't want to just slap it on there and not worry about prepping the surface. Surface prep is important. So is shelf life. After epoxies have sat around for a while, they become significantly less effective. So if your epoxy's been sitting around in the drawer for a while, go splurge down at Home Depot and get yourself a fresh supply. You won't be sorry. As I mentioned, I'm using mosaic pins, small decorative pins that I made myself, which help secure the handle scales to the tang of the knife. If you're interested in how these were made, click here to see a video about making the pins. Assembly is pretty simple. The key thing is that you want to make sure you don't get any epoxy on the blade. So once everything is clamped up, I'll very carefully get rid of every single bit of squeeze out. Now this can be a little bit of a juggling act, trying to get clamps in the right places while also cleaning everything up before the glue starts to get tacky to clean off the blade. It's a little easier if you use a 60 minute type epoxy rather than the 5 minute epoxies but I'm using five minute here because that's what I got down at Home Depot. Alright, after letting the epoxy cure for 24 hours, I'll grind the handle. As I pointed out in other videos, you don't want to get too aggressive and overheat the pins. Using a nice fresh belt helps to keep heat buildup at moderate levels. There's nothing especially complicated about this particular handle, no complex contouring. That said, the trickiest part to grind on most blades is the bottom of the handle, and the same is true here. So I usually clean that up on the slack belt using 3M Trizac belts. A little sneaky hint though is you can kind of use this little piece right up near the platen wheels that's not actually supported by the platen. It's nice and soft and if you're careful you can use that almost like a slack belt. The advantage of the slack belt over a platen is that it doesn't dig in on the edges and so it's a little easier to do soft profiles and transitions. 
I really like Trizac belts for finishing. They're not very aggressive, so they're not that great for rough grinding, but when you want finish and control, Trizac is really hard to beat. It's what's known as a structured abrasive, so that you basically have little piles of abrasive which wear away, exposing fresh abrasives. As long as you don't abuse them and use them for things that they're not designed for, they last a very, very long time. And they basically give you the exact same abrasive properties from the first time you use them until they're totally worn out. Unlike conventional abrasive belts, which start to lose cutting ability more or less the second you start using them. Now I'll go ahead and give the blade a final grind. In my previous paring knife video, I gave the blade a smooth hand rubbed finish, but on this blade, I'll just grind it with 300 micron Trizac, moving on up to about 65 micron, and then I'll just leave that exact finish on the blade. No further works required, and this is a perfectly acceptable finish for a working knife. Finally, I'll rub a little tongue oil into the handle. Frankly, an oily wood like this doesn't really need much of a finish at all. Wax it and polish it and it'll look great. So, why did I give it a tongue oil finish? Uh, I just sort of forgot what I was doing. Won't hurt anything, though. And there we have it, the final product. Okay, in my next video, I'll be making an integral knife. Unlike the blades I've shown recently, which are made using stock removal methods, integrals are forged blades. The basic idea is that the entire blade, including the bolster, is forged from a single piece of steel. They're quite challenging to make and are really a rewarding project if you can pull them off. All right, let's take us out with a little kitchen porn. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you can find more of my work. You'll also find plenty more videos there that you can't find on YouTube with very, very detailed information about all aspects of Japanese blade making. Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrels Blades.